In a recent conversation, Dr. Robert Tai and I discussed the critical needs to address the climate crisis and understand its impact on health. Dr. Tai, who recently was appointed to lead the development of our climate change research strategy for the School of Medicine, will be steering efforts to understand the profound effects on global health and pioneer innovative solutions to address these challenges. So Rob, thanks for joining me today and thanks for leading the planning for our climate initiative. And this is a great setting to have this conversation. So as you think about strategy for climate change, why should we be involved in it and what do you think our major goals are? Yeah, first off, I want to thank you for your leadership and vision on this really important endeavor. It's been an amazing experience getting to meet with faculty and students and really think about in the strategic planning process. But as you know, um, our planet is warming yeah. and climate change is real. Um, and beyond just heat, as we have noticed over the summer with the multiple days above 90 and the heat index is above 100, it's also affecting other parts of our environment, including things like appreciating the hurricanes and the seven and a half inches of water that our community got. And ultimately that has an impact on, on health and the health of the communities that we take care of. So I think what you found doing the kind of planning phase is there's work already going on. What are some of the cool projects you heard about? The major one that comes to mind is uh, the, a group working on chronic kidney disease of unknown etiology right. or CKDU, um, which is a, a problem of early kidney failure uh, in young individuals, mostly in agricultural communities. It mostly seems to be the workers in those agricultural communities. It's occurring across the globe. So there uh, have been cases initially described in Central and South America, right. also in East Asia, particularly Sri Lanka, but even some recent cases in North Carolina. We don't really know what it, that's all about, yet there's a group that is a mix of individuals from the Nicholas School, from the Global Health Institute, and also from nephrology, who are really interested in you know, what are the factors that are going on and even what's to the basic science of, you know, the combination of thinking about heat and potentially pesticides and the impact that that may have in these particular communities. The second group that came to mind is one that I sort of discovered in the process of going around looking at strategic planning, and that was uh, a group um, in MGM that's really wow. interested. I love this project. <laughs> I love this project. They, it's it's uh, a little scary at times, yeah. but, but also really exciting. And they're um, really interested in how heat is changing uh, fungal pathogenesis. Um, and I think there's a tremendous opportunity as they're concerned that fungus is starting to adapt to heat. And as it adapts to heat, it'll become more pathogenic and more, cause more infections in humans. And as you know, the treatment of fungal disease in humans is never pleasant yeah. and is not very good. So this is already an area where there's a lot of potential of, of leveraging the individuals that are doing sort of human biology with also thinking about collaborating with people across campus that do more plant biology. Well, you say across campus, obviously the climate initiative is not just in the School of Medicine. And we really wanna make sure that we leverage the, the campus in, in many ways to, to really put ourselves and the leaders of climate change initiative. So how are we doing that? How are we aligning with campus? One of, one of the people that I've been working with coined the phrase that, that climate change is the mother of all um, interdisciplinary problems or challenges. And I think that really speaks to it. It's, this is not something that will be solved by one person or one silo. This really requires an all hands on deck effort. And the university has been leading in this uh, in terms of their climate commitment. And I'm really excited that with the uh, work that we've been doing, is to really help reinforce that and also think about the natural areas that we can collaborate with other groups. And I've been doing that actively with discussions uh, pe with people in Toddy Steelman's office to try to understand how do we make sure as we're doing this strategic planning that it aligns well with the university and the potential there. And one area that's obvious is the climate data. I mean, that's not unique to yeah. any of our work, but it's a data set that we all need access to. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, I think, data is a major thing. <laughs> right. um, and also making, that we, making sure we don't duplicate data. And then also trying to make sure that that data is accessible right. to investigators so that the bar doesn't feel so high that they don't 
want to look at it. Ending with strategy again, you've now done several months of, of really testing the environment, thinking about where we really should start putting our efforts. So what's your vision now? I'm actually really excited about this. I know the topic can be a little bit depressing for people. I think this is a really amazing opportunity to integrate campus and to really operationalize uh, something that you talk about, about One Duke, um, of really being something that brings us together. I think the other thing in terms of the planning that I'm really excited about is, is the ability for us to, in it, to be able to more meaningfully engage with our communities, because this is really, really something important. being experienced by the community. We need to know what they understand of climate and health. We need to listen to what their concerns are and then start to think of strategies to help mitigate those effects and, and also to provide some outreach so that they kind of understand the relationship between what's happening in their environment and their climate and how that might be impacting their health, which could allow them to make choices. So Rob, thank you so much for starting our efforts on this most important initiative. I love that we're doing it in the gardens because it's a good example of an environment that we really need to preserve as we're thinking about the adverse effects of climate change. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.